Good morning. <laughs> I took a little longer than I thought. I, I did a little commercial ahead of time saying that uh, we were going to be a little bit late this morning because I had a, um, a date with a tow truck that um, I couldn't get out of. So, um, yeah, apologize for that. And uh, going to give a little short today. We've got a lot going on. Here at the House of Prayer and in Jim and Linda's life, and uh, boy, I sure, I sure hope I didn't lose my whole audience uh, for the delay of time. But anyway, I suppose they can watch it later. So, um, yeah, good morning. Uh, pray that you have a good day today. I hope I'm, I sound a little echoey. I happen to be, isn't this a beautiful blue background? I happen to be in my wife's office at the Salem House of Prayer, and it is... Um, it's one of the places I really love to go. Uh, I love to be mostly because of the way, you know, there's a whole story behind the building that the Lord allowed us to be in. And uh, this uh, room was a room that was used to, uh, for some pretty nefarious things, and um, uh, among other things. Anyway, I, I don't want to go into that whole story. Uh, good morning, Heather. I think that's your face I see. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you, you came back. I was wondering if anybody was going to come back or not. So uh, very nice to have you. Anyway, this room uh, was used for some wicked stuff. And, uh, and the Lord has now redeemed it. And so um, it now is the glory of the Lord is here. The presence of God is here. And I love that. I love, you know, God doesn't just take broken things and uh, demolish them and get rid of them. Or, you know, just kind of patch them up a little bit. That's not what he does. And, you know, the building that we're in had a history and it was a bar. OK, and I'm not going to I'm not going to go in the whole story. Maybe I will in the future, but I don't have time today. But we were next door to this building and this building was basically a nightclub. It wasn't like a cheers, good old boy kind of a bar. It was a nightclub. And um, and we found out some things uh, uh, that had been going on here. And of course, most nightclubs are not places where good things happen. So, uh, yeah, so you you can fill in the blanks. But the point is, we uh, the Lord provided it for us. We moved in here and uh, and it was very oppressive feeling. The spirit uh, it was just such a heavy, heavy thing. And we really doubted whether or not we wanted to even, uh, you know, do it. If we wanted to come into the building and, and go through all the process of, you know, redemption is a process. I'm not, I'm sure you are aware of that because all of you are in the process yourself. But, you know, it's one thing to buy a new vehicle. It's another thing to restore a vehicle. All right. I love restored vehicles. Never done it myself. Okay. Uh, but I, and part of that is because I've come to understand why mostly old guys have restored vehicles. Have you noticed that? You go to these uh, car shows where where the vehicle's been restored, it's always old guys. And the reason why is because it, it takes them their whole life to do it. So Jesus restores, right? He made you uh, to be in his image, but sin enters in and we go astray. And sin has a corruptible and life-sucking influence on our life. I mean, we become something we're not intended to be because sin, the same way that righteousness and godliness brings life, Sin and wickedness draws it out of you. So anyway, uh, the, we didn't know that we wanted to like go through the whole restoration process of the building, but finally we did, and I'm so glad we did. And here's what the Lord does. He makes a better you. He does make a better you, but it's because he lives inside you. It's not just keep the Ten Commandments, you know, da-da-da. No, 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 no. You... <laughs> Our life proves we need a Savior, we need, you may not think you need to be saved, but you do need to be saved. Jesus, the, uh, the angel of the Lord, and we're coming into that season of Christmas, the angel uh, announced to Mary, he said, you will call his name Jesus. No choice, you don't get to say, okay? He said, you will call his name Jesus, and God had a divinely appointed reason for his name, just like he does your name. Anyway, he said, because he will save his people from what? Sickness, poverty, uh, suffering, an uncomfortable life? Well, for the most part, I think God does that. I mean, he he's, gives good gifts to his children and all that, but what you need to be saved from is sin. He will save his people. To deny that Jesus saves people from sin is to deny his very name. 
and deny the reason he came. God became a man, Emmanuel, God with us, okay? God became a man, and he is God, and he was in the beginning with God, and he was God, it says, and all things were created by him. Read it again, John, first chapter. The reason God became a human being is so that human beings could become like God, so that we could have fellowship, and that's becoming like God out of relationship, right? We don't become like God because we have a set of rules that we keep, although there are rules, okay? Don't let anybody tell you that they're not... God does have commandments, okay? Commandments are rules in case, you know, you get a little mixed up about that. That is exactly what they are, okay? I know people have talked about we don't have a relationship with the rules, and that's true. We have a relationship with Jesus. But when you love Jesus, the Bible says that you're going to keep Jesus said it, not me. I'm just quoting, okay? That's all I'm doing. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Mike. I'm just quoting. What did Jesus say? Kenneth, God bless you. Sorry, I don't want to miss people's names. Jesus said, hey, Cheryl, there you are. He said, I'm going to get to it. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my suggestions, paradigms, principles. Definitely not suggestions, but you call them what you want. If you're offended by the word rule, fine. Call it whatever you want to call it. But Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to do what I say. Amen. So we do. We don't have a relationship with just, you know, a list of things. We have a relationship with Jesus, but out of that relationship, we most definitely follow what he says. Amen? At least we ought to be. That's what we want, right? I, don't you want to be like Jesus? That's, that's the thing. So it's not just doing and not doing and all that. It's him. It's walking with him. Amen? So I said all that. <laughs> wow, radical bunny trail. I started out by saying I'm in this room that was used for darkness, but now it's used for righteousness. I feel the glory of God when I come in here. Actually, I do in our whole house. It's a wonderful story. So I hope you're doing good today. Uh, we are, uh, it's a special day today, okay? It's a good day, yeah? So I heard the Lord last night, and I just, I just felt like sharing this with you. And again, I don't have a lot of time. I, I have another appointment of about 15 minutes, so, so hang on to your seat. I'm liable to talk hard and fast. But uh, first of all, I want to wish you Merry Christmas. And... Um, you know, all this. I hope that you posture your heart that it's going to be good. You know, because if you posture your heart, I am going to have the best Christmas I have ever had. When the world says it's a long, dark winter and oh my gosh, it's horrible, it's terrible, and, and just hide at home, you, make your mind up you're going to have a good Christmas. Anyway, so last night the Holy Spirit spoke to me real clearly and he said, It's going to be a good day tomorrow, or tomorrow's going to be a good day. I can't remember which came first. Okay, so I'm going to tell you my reaction to that. Are you ready for this? <clears throat> I know this may not seem super spiritual to some of you. And I know some of you think every time somebody gets on here, they ought to be, you know, giving deep, you know, powerful, prophetic. You know, come on. All right. You know, that's, we don't just live constantly, you know, prophesying. And, you know, come on. We're, we're real people. We live real. Yes, we get dreams from God. Yes, we have prophetic ears. Yes, we encourage each other. Yes, we prophesy. Yes, we get passionate. I do all those things. But let's, let's you know, we're real people too, okay? So let's not forget to enjoy ourselves once in a while, okay? In the midst, I, there's, I don't know a few people <laughs> that are more passionate about righteousness and sin. I love righteousness and hate iniquity, hopefully kind of like Jesus does. So I am passionate about things, but I also believe the joy of the Lord is your strength, all right? So anyway, the Lord says, uh, speaks to me and he says, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you my reaction is going to shock you, all right? Are you ready to be shocked? Say amen, amen. Um, I was like, I was, I was like, oh no. <laughs> so, well, why were you, uh, why did you say oh no? Because my uh, experience, uh, often when the Lord tells me it's going to be a good day, the exact opposite is what appears to happen, okay? Now, uh, uh, I got thrown by that the first couple times, and I and I shouldn't go. Oh no, I recovered pretty quickly. But here's what happens: often, God has wonderful things in store and planned for you today, and uh, He is He's like in His heart, He's like, it's going to be a great day. Oh man, I've got some good things coming. And the enemy's like, not on, not on your life. Not if I have anything to do with it. Not if I have anything to say about it. And that's when you step in and say, I curse you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I will have a good day because God said so. And there's nothing you can do about it. So sometimes you got to open your mouth. You do. We talk to God. We, I don't talk to the enemy very much. But once in a while, I do get up in his grill and tell him where to go. I tell him he can just go right back to where it came from, which is hell. <laughs> 
I'm not cursing, okay? Don't judge me. I'm just telling you. Oh, you, you can just go back to hell where you came from in Jesus' name. Today is going to be a good day. So I didn't realize when he said that to me last night, my first instinctive was like, oh no, what bad thing is going to happen? And then I went, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. No, amen. See, you get to choose. You get to decide. You get to decide, not the devil, not God. You get to decide. God says, I got a plan for a great day. And the devil says, I got a plan for a rotten day. You are the deciding vote. I wonder how many Christians grasp that. God has a sovereign will. The enemy has a will. You have a will. You get to say, God's not going to force his will on you. The enemy would like to force his will on you, but he can't. You get to say. Okay, so... Amen. Are you still with me? <clears throat> the clock is ticking. All right. So uh, I didn't realize when the Lord said that to me that today is the day. I mean, I knew it. I've been, I've been praying towards it. It's on the calendar. I got it. Um, but I, I guess it kind of slipped my mind that today is the day that the, uh, that the different states uh, decide <coughs> on uh, the presidency. Excuse me. Um, the electors cast votes and uh, verify and all that. I'm not going to go into all the technical jargon, but you know what I'm talking about. Today's the day they do that. So this is supposed to be the cutoff. <clears throat> I included in this message a link. Now, uh, probably most of us know more about politics now than we ever planned on knowing. And I actually think that's a good thing. I really do. I know there's a lot of people say, oh, I don't look at anything. I don't, you know, whatever, whatever. That's up to you. That's fine. But I do believe that one of the reasons we are in the condition we are today in our country, and it's not good in case you haven't been watching, is because we who are called to be the salt and the light have withdrawn from that because it's dark. We do this. Christians do this. We withdraw from television. We withdraw from internet. We withdraw from everything that the enemy seems to dominate or does dominate. We pull back from it and we say, we cannot touch not the unclean thing. I don't want to be polluted. We pull back from it and we give it over to the enemy. Now, that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with me on that. But I don't believe that Jesus wants us not to be salt and light in all of those areas. So anyway, we all probably know more than we ever wanted to know. But here's the point. <clears throat> Jesus is still Lord. Those guys, there may be kings over media and kings over over the politics and governments and military and, and religion. There may be kings over those, but Jesus is the king over those kings. They may not believe it. Do you realize it doesn't matter if they believe it? <laughs> it doesn't matter if that king doesn't believe that Jesus is the king over him because it's still true. It's like I'm always telling you about your own life. You know, you don't realize, hey, Gene, you don't realize... Uh, you know, in a way, in a sense, hear what I'm saying. In a sense, it doesn't matter whether you believe you're a king and a priest. I saw you in the future. And in the future, in the book of Revelation, you're standing, and that is if you're saved, and if you are among uh, every tribe and tongue, uh, unless you're some tribe or tongue that the Lord forgot about, okay, you're going to be in that crowd. That's You are in the Bible. You are literally pre-written in the book of Revelation. And you know what you cry to the Lord one day in the future? Maybe the not too distant, you know, or far, who knows. You say you have made us, us, all of us, but that means you too to become a king and a priest and we will reign with you forever. That's you. Now, you can choose not to believe that. You can go, oh, that's not me. You know, no, that's not me. Maybe one day if I become a really good Christian, that'll be, no, 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 no. You don't understand. That's not what we're saying. It, you are that. You may not be doing a good job of it, but you are that. Okay, so today's the day that a lot of this stuff happens. I believe no matter what happens today, God is going to get the victory. All right, I'm not going to predict you everything that's going to happen, but you want to look at the link. It's actually a reader, and I know some of you don't like to read, so you may not go there, but you probably ought to because it's going to tell you some stuff that you don't know. So I want to just spend the next five minutes. I have to keep looking at the clock on the wall. Okay, the next few minutes. Are you ready? I want to talk about a passage of scripture, okay? And this is found in 1 John. I am so out of sorts today. I don't even have where it's, I don't even have a Bible in front of me. <clears throat> but it's a scripture that says, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. So you're a king and a priest. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't believe it, okay? 
That's like me saying you're a human being. I don't believe I'm a human being. I think I'm a, a, an alien from the planet Mars, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you know, you do tend to live what you believe. <laughs> so it's kind of important that you believe what is true. And what is true is what God says about you. You may never live up to it. You may never enter into it. You may never even choose to believe it. But by golly, you are what he says you are. And when you stand in front of him, he'll go, hey, uh, I, you were right there in the scripture. How, you know, I said you were my son. Now, it's not just what, you're not just a king and a priest. You're a son or a daughter. You're a servant. He's the master, right? These are relationship uh, things. You are, uh, if, if you do what he says, he says, you are my friends. That's a great thing, right? I want to be the friend of Jesus, yeah? But he says, there's a condition. He says, not just everybody's his friend. He's not just everybody's homeboy. He says, you are my friends if you do whatsoever things I command you. So that's important, okay? Um, but all of these relationship things are true. But sometimes we don't feel like we are, okay? Sometimes we don't feel like we are who God says we are. And so it's really, really important that if our heart condemns us, if we get to feeling like I am, I am not... Now, you, it is right if you're not living up to it, okay? It is right for you to go, I am not living up to who I am. Jesus, I believe that this is who you made me. Not, not to be this person that is locked in sin and iniquity, but to be this person that's a king and a priest before. I believe that's who you made me to be. And not to condemn. It says if our heart condemns us, and it does sometimes, God is greater than our heart. Okay? In other words, he takes precedence. He has authority. He can forgive. He can restore. He can redeem like this room that I'm in. Don't cut him short. Sometimes the enemy wants you to look so much at you, you quit looking at God. And that's always a big mistake. All right, friends, I'm going to have to stop. My call just came in for my appointment, and it's one I cannot afford to miss. I'm sorry I had to cut this short. And uh, again, uh, appreciate you guys so much. Love you so much. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Take a minute to share or like or whatever. And uh, it's going to be a good day. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people today. Give them a heart to believe that you're going to do wonders today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, be in prayer. Pray for our government. Pray for our president. Pray for legislators. Pray for states. Do it all today. Take some extra time today to pray. It would be really good to do that. So love you guys. God bless you. And as always, what do I say? Give yourself permission. You can do it to have a great day. God bless you.